So, we have our .core data, which is our corrected data. However, how do we get it from Pathfinder Office into a format which we can use in any other GIS system? To do that, we use the export menu, which is again on this toolbar at the left hand side or in the utilities menu. If we click on export, this window will open. Here we can browse to the files that we wish to export. In this case, it's our survey from the day, uh, which has already been selected. You can select the output folder, and then you can choose the format that you wish to export your data in. So in this case, I'm going to export it as an Esri shape file because I'm using GIS as my uh, GIS that I'm managing all of my data in. However, this does have several other options. You can export a Idrisi file as a grass file, as a KML if you wish to view in Google Earth, and as various other um, GIS formats and database formats. So, I want to just leave it as, and most of these read sample before, so simply leave it on the appropriate one. So mine is sample Esri shapefile setup. Now, before we click OK in this menu and actually produce our shapefile, we want to make sure that it's got the correct properties that we want it to have. So if we click on the properties menu, we get a range of options with a series of tabs. The first one is data, and here we can click whether to uh, export all features in the drop, drop down menu. We have several other options there, only new features, new and updated features. So it's quite intelligent software. You can, uh, for example, update a file and then not export the entire file again. You can just export the changed features. The important thing to note is below this we have an option for include not in feature positions. Now, not in feature positions are the between feature logging uh, setting that I discussed on the video in the videos of the field work. So if you're collecting topographic data, for example, or position data in the background between your features, you need to tick this box to specify that you're going to export those positions, otherwise they won't export. So when we've done that, you have a, a selection of whether you export the lines, um, basically so export your points as a line, which is grouped, so a series of positions grouped together, or whether you actually want to just have one point per feature that was logged. In this case, I want to do that because I'm using my data to create a grid of elevation, date, uh, elevation uh, values, which I can then use to create a raster to actually see those elevation variations in the GIS. So. We have one point per not feed in feature position clicked and include not in feature positions. In output, we can choose to, uh, for each input file, create output subfolders of the same name. This will simply separate out your data into convenient subfolders because Pathfinder Office will also store, for example, if you've been taking image file, uh, images attached to your files, this would normally apply to the Juno. Um, Pathfinder Office will store that information with your files and this way you can just keep it all very easily managed. So you can, uh, or if you wish to have all of your files that are within your data file, all of the different features combined as one export feature, you can simply click the top option to uh, export all of them, to combine the import files and export them. So in this case we're just going to click each import file, create output subfolders. Attributes. Now this is a very important and useful menu. Here you can select the additional attributes that you wish your features to have. So as well as any uh, attributes such as uh, comments, uh, names, or um, any other information that you've recorded in the field attached to your features, here you can select additional attributes to export. So I have selected for my data when I export it to also have an attribute for the height at every given position the vertical precision and the horizontal precision of the um, position data, uh, its standard deviation, and the actual position information, so the coordinates. We uh, can then click units. Now here, the units, the data will be processed in uh, Pathfinder Office and will have come from the Nomad in WGS84 projection. So latitude, longitude, this is what the data is collected in, so to view it in any other format you will need to change change this uh, in the menus that we have here. So also the units that it uses, um, you can use, you can basically select what units you wish it to export in. So here we're using meters for distance, square meters for area for example. You can select the units that you wish it to export, you can select the number of decimal places you wish it to have for each of the attribute values. 
Position filter is also a very important menu to take note of, mainly because there are a series of tick boxes here which um, will control what is actually exported by your file. So you can do things at the bottom of here like filter by precision, so you can select a particular precision and it will only export uh, positions that have met those requirements. Um, but in the tick boxes, you'll see one that is labelled uncorrected. Now, if this isn't ticked, then it will only export corrected data. So because we're working with differentially corrected data, I can untick that box. However, if you were bringing in your Juno data, and you hadn't been working in the area of a base file, your data will be uncorrected. So if you don't leave that um, box ticked you, when exporting from the Juno, you won't actually see any of your data. Um, simply because it hasn't been exported. We can then go to coordinate system. Now, as I stated, the data will be collected in latitude, longitude, WGS84. You can uh, change this uh, export by clicking at the top, use export coordinate system. A menu will then become available which says change, and you can then select from a range of different coordinate systems. The important thing to note is that you will need a projection file for the relevant coordinate system. So if you're working in ArcGIS, uh, for example, you need to know where your project, uh, projection files are for ArcGIS and be able to, the first time you, you use this, simply tell the software the file path to that projection file so that it can actually find the projection file to export your data in a format which can be recognised by the GIS. And then we simply have the, a few other options here which aren't really relevant in the Esri shapefile. Tab. So we've gone through here and we've selected all of the items that we wanted to have, all of the uh, various attributes, and then we click OK. We're now back to our export menu. We can simply click OK there. We'll get a progress bar, and it will then give us information about that. So we can see how many features were uh, exported, and then it will also produce a log file. Okay, so we've now got our data from the um, the Nomad onto Pathfinder Office and we've created an export file. The export file will be saved in your GNSS projects folder. So the project when you've created it will have a named folder in GNSS projects on your C drive or wherever you've stored that folder. And this subfolder, your project subfolder, will have within it several folders which are pre-assigned by the software which include a folder called export. If you go into the export folder, this is where your exported shape files will be saved, or your exported other GIS data if you chose to save it in a different format. So we can then open that data in ArcGIS. So, in this case, I'm going to show you some of the data that we've, uh, we've collected. So, here we have a Bing Maps aerial imagery view of the Tizalgada Basin, where the videos were prepared earlier and you can see here the edge of June, which was visible in the background of some of those videos. So we wanted to collect uh, data across the basin to create a topographic map, and we've been able to do that by walking across the basin, recording between feature positions, and also logging fixed positions when we've had a, a feature of interest. So this raster is uh, coded with blue as the lowest elevations and white as the highest, with this gradation between, and we can start to see already some of the topography there. This raster has been created by interpolating between the between feature and other um, feature points. So by taking those points, which in the end for this survey, which we uh, performed over around about four or five days, came to nearly 30,000 data points because we were logging between feature positions every metre. Uh, that equates to around about 30 kilometers that have been walked by myself and my colleagues over the last few days to collect the data. And so we've ended up with a really high resolution map. It has, it, with the differential corrections, it's very precise, and we've also collected a lot of data to be able to get a very high resolution, uh, very high spatial resolution map. So this is our, our data, and then we can zoom in on this and it will recode. So we can start to see different elements of the topography Side. and we can keep zooming in and because we've collected this data at a very high resolution it will continue to update. However for now we'll just zoom back to our previous extent. 
like that for us to save. Um, so we, we, this also means that with the GPS we've been able to log various other features. So these features that you can now see overlaying on that raster are various things that we've recorded around the basin during the, uh, the last few days. And so you can see how this would really allow you to get very high precision uh, feature locations. You have in here polygons, we have various points that have been created representing different features of interest around the site. And we're able to overlay this already in our GIS. It's spatially located so that as long as we've uh, exported it in the coordinate system that we wish it to have in order to be able to compare it to our other data, we can see it immediately in reference in relation to the, um, for example, in this case, the big maps data. And so, as well as the interpolated map which we've been able to generate, you can also see the contours which we've then generated from that interpolated map. So, you can really generate a lot of information using the GPS data that you've collected in the field. And if you wish to perform topographic um, analyses, then using the between feature positions option, walking transects is a very good way to do it. And that is the end of the video tutorials. More detailed information regarding how you can actually uh, work with the Pathfinder Office software and with the Terrasync software is available in the user manuals which have been prepared by uh, Kings. There is also a short video showing the use of some of the Terrasync software to collect points and you can um, reference these and the official user manuals for further details. Particularly in the use of the Terrasync software, we haven't been able to do the video very clearly today on the on navigating around Terrasync because it's quite difficult to get this so that you can see it clearly on the video but in the user guide we have detailed discussions of how to use Terrasync in order to collect your data in the field.